Our pace of living leaves us little time for leisure. Our program will give you a chance to experience the fascinating world of traveling, extreme adventures, hunting and fishing. Each week we will take you to the most beautiful places of Kazakhstan. In the previous edition, we traveled down the river Ilyu from the Tasmarin Game Reserve to the origin of the river Delta. This time we introduce you to the Delta itself. According to the geographic term, a river Delta is a landform at the mouth of a river. Deltas form from deposition of sediment carried by a river as the flow leaves its mouth. The right estuary that flows from the Ilyu in the valley is the Topa Creek. Because of a drop in the level of water in the river, the Topara lake system is isolated from its lake. Its smaller lakes have turned to drying puddles. We sail past Aralto Bay. The settlement is not seen from the Ili River because of the riparian forest. On the river bank, we see several old women fishing for aspen using homemade fishing rods. On the bank of the Topara Creek, is the Aralto Bay Fishermen's Settlement. We ask them how their fishing is. Since the morning, they have caught two aspen. They say they are not lucky. Their distinct dialect tells us they are locals from the hunter's village. In the 1940s, almost 100 hunters were involved in producing otter furs and skins at the Delta. Otter fur from the near Balkhasha area was in demand at international fur auctions. The country was in burning need of foreign currency those days. Generally, we strongly disagree with radical green organizations that claim that any human activity that interferes the natural environment is necessarily evil. For example, introduction of these species to this habitat has not caused any harm to native species, but it gave a sustainable source of income to local people. The same can be said about the introduction of some fish species, such as common carp, bastard sturgeon and grass carp to the Yui Balkhash River basin. But one has to be careful with bringing changes to a different habitat. For instance, Director of Zoology Institute of Kazakh SSR, Professor Slutsky, who manages a project for bringing otters to a new habitat, expressed his strong disagreement with the construction of the Kapchagai hydroelectric station, saying it would be unacceptable in the Literaturne newspaper. Time proved he was right. Despite enormous efforts put in the erecting the constructions by Kapchagai authorities, the aim of the station was not achieved. It failed to reach its planned capacity. And here eventually we see a wild animal. A jackal flees from the sandy river bank into thick bushes. At night one may hear jackals howling everywhere in this area. Below Aralto Bay, to the left, flows a little anna branch. It is Kalganili. The river Ili used to have a large creek, Kalgan Ili, which was the Ili itself and Jidel 5 km down the Aralto Bay settlement. The main current of the river changed its direction a long time ago and now flows on the Jidel riverbed and Kalgan Ili turned to the Jidel smaller creek, which, despite the small size, runs and flows into Lake Balhash near the Kuigan village. At the estuary of the Kalganili, at the beginning of the past century, fisherman's village Kuigan was set up. But like in many rivers, in the desert zone, the current of the Ili changed. Before the constructing of the Kapchagai HES, the river carried up to 5% of alluvial sediments from the slopes of Tianshan. These deposits would settle along the river banks, making the soil fertile for vegetation, riparian forests, which are abundant here. Sometimes heavy deposits, the river sands, built up in the river estuary, washing the main river bed away, and the river current found new ways to flow into the lake. Today, only 7% of the previous amount of water flows on the old river bed. Below the creek, the river water is used for livestock grazing and as a watering place. Uh, 
задача в день проходить по 50 километров, особенно. If one aims to travel 50 kilometers a day, they won't have much time for fishing, because they will have to row a lot. If you decide to fish by trolling, you'll mix work and pleasure, and you may catch something for your meal. I think I've got something. No, there is nothing. Originally, there were only six kinds of fish species in the area. Three of them were significant for fishermen. They were the Eli and Balkash Marinka and the Balkash Perch. In the second half of the 19th century, grass carp got into the waters of Balkash from a sick cool by accident. It adjusted to the new environment very soon. From the 1930s to the 1950s, bastard stungeon, aspen, grass carp, catfish, pike perch, common bream, warbler, Volga pike perch, and aral barbell. Quite recently, there has been found a new species here, the snakehead. Time passes quickly as we catch fish and videotape ducks, which we see more and more often as we sail further. We haven't noticed we covered 16 kilometers. It's the fifth day today, the 19th of March, 4 p.m. I'm at Alserke. Here the Jideli is divided to Jideli and Ir. Through this Anna branch, the Jideli carries its waters to the Ir. Here we are at the end of the Ili River. There are several versions of the origin of the name Ili. According to one of them, Ili originates from a Mongolian word Il, which means shiny. So it means shiny river. It may also have come from the Tungus Manchu language, and the possible meaning is big. The reason for such a name may be the biggest size of the river compared to the rest of the rivers in the region, which was noticed by ancient Normans when they were crossing it, and they called it Big River. The Jideli flows to the right, and the main stream is in the ear. Here, outside fishing, is Hantengri, where the wildest part of the Uli Delta starts that remains intact. We stop for the night 8 kilometers below. As soon as we walk out on the riverbank, we find traces of a wild boar and roe deer. We walk for 15 meters and then hear some rustling noise and grunting in the canes. In the lake, there are about 200 ducks and a couple of swans. Somewhere from a distance, we hear roe deer and jackals howling. We see more and more of ducks. We saw northern pintails fly by and now we watch plenty of netted ducks. It's the 20th of March today, the sixth day of the journey, a midday. It rained this morning, so we had to set off later. I should say that down the fork of the river, the fauna changed dramatically. At night we couldn't sleep well because of wild boars grunting somewhere around us. In the lake, swans had clashes. In the morning I saw three swans. Apparently one of them is a rival. Last night we heard roe deer barking near our tent. So there are quite a lot of wild animals down the old river delta. Snow has melted along the Anna branches revealing the roots of reed maize. They are sweet and are wild boar's favorite food. On the area of 60 kilometers, we have met five groups of wild boar, five to seven species in each. 
Wild boars are quite funny. One of them noticed me and ran away. But while it was running, it forgot why it had been scared, stopped and started to graze with the rest of the herd. And it was only when a mature boar saw me and it grunted noisily signaling the herd about the danger so that the herd immediately scattered. The banks of the ear and the baimini and further down all dug by wild boars. This area, however, did not suffer from fires much. Here, the center of the delta is difficult to access by motorized transport. Therefore, keeping livestock on the delta islands is not efficient. This saves this wild corner from fires and other negative effects of the human progress. On the riverbank, we watch pheasants fight. We hear the familiar flapping of wings and happy plopping down on the water. In the neighboring lake, a flock of geese landed on the surface of water, noisily arguing with one another. Wild ducks join this row too, but the geese are louder the birds seem to exchange information about where it is better to search for food and where it is safer to stay. It gets cold soon. The rain turns to snow. The wind blows about our tent during the whole night and it dies out only in the morning. Still water has got covered with a crust of ice. It is quite strong to hold one person's weight. On the following day, ice slightly melts and we set off. 22 марта, 9 часов утра, седьмой день пути. The 22nd of March, 9 a.m., day 7 of the journey. If I'm lucky to cross the Kustastiu Creek and reach Lake Asaubai, I'll be able to spend the night in comfort in the base camp near the delta. We want to cut the route short by 15 kilometers and cross the creek, but it is all held with ice. We have to go back to the ear. Unfortunately, my idea to cut the way short by crossing the Kustastiu Creek didn't work. The creek is still covered with ice. We have to return using the same path to Lake Asaubain. As one approaches the shore of Lake Balkhash, it becomes obvious that there are more fires and fewer wild animals. During one day we counted 18 heat sources. There is a lot of smoke everywhere here. Here we are near Lake Asaubai. There's nine kilometers more to Balkash. Getting to the Delta base camp is not easy. The bay is still covered with ice. We take a risk to walk on ice and pull the boat. This is the maximum speed. It's over. Having overcome the ice bay part of the route, we walk towards the creek. And eventually, we see the building of the camp. In the evening, we discuss the plan of the final part of the expedition, which is getting to the most inaccessible corners of the delta where it is planned to reintroduce the tiger. Mm -hmm.